Hi class, this is uh, Visual Communications 110. Uh, this is Jonathan Early teaching, and this is going to be my first video tutorial. The first two weeks I focused mainly on explaining concepts and the overall ideas behind web design uh, before we actually start digging into any technical practices. So hopefully those notes have been helpful and have helped you to understand sort of what we're going to be getting into. Uh, Today we're going to be focusing on just basic HTML and also I'm going to talk to you about a few different uh, uh, code editors and I will be posting links in the notes but uh, for those of you using PC uh, here's a link called 22 neat code editors for Windows. Now since I don't use Windows as much I'm not as familiar with which ones are the best but I know uh, one, the two that come with the every computer is Notepad and also WordPad. Uh, you can create any kind of HTML or CSS or JavaScript or PHP or any other code using those programs. The only problem is it's not going to have what's called um, syntax highlighting. All the text is just going to be black, whereas with syntax highlighting, as you can see here, different code elements are coded using different or are highlighted with different colors just to make it a little uh, easier visually for the coder. The other thing that Notepad and WordPad don't have are sort of this uh, indentation system here. So like if I indent something here and I hit return, it's going to keep it indented on the next line. So WordPad and Notepad won't do those two things, but you can edit and create code with those programs. Uh, so I, I guess I'll just leave it up to you guys uh, for you, those of you using Windows, just to go through this list and see which ones uh, you think will work. Uh, the most popular one uh, for Windows is Dreamweaver, but that costs uh, quite a bit of money. But I use it on a daily basis and I find it very helpful and uh, as we go through the semester, I'll sort of be explaining to you what all the various advantages are to using it. Um, but I've also heard uh, BB Edit is good, and let's see, it looks like there's Notepad too. So the thing you'll probably be most interested in is if the program is free or not. And so a lot of these um, are free. So let's see here. So yeah, I'll kind of just leave it up to you guys to go through it. Also, front page seems to be pretty popular in Windows. Um, so yeah, those of you using Mac, I'll also include a link for you guys. And this is 30 plus amazing Mac apps for developers. The first one they list here is Coda, which I know some people that use it and they're really happy with it. The only problem is it costs $99. There's also TextMate, which I've heard a lot of great things about, but it's $55. But one that I use that's free is Komodo Edit. So I recommend that uh, for those of you not wanting to spend money. Let's see, there's also BB Edit, which is 125. So a lot of these cost money. Um, with this blog post, these aren't all just code editors. Some of these are FTP clients and um, like Cyberduck and FileZilla, for example. I'll be telling you guys more about those later. These basically let you upload content to web servers. Um, let's see here. Another great one is Optana. I'm not sure if it's listed on here, but um, I can post a link to it. Yeah, it's, it's uh, just optana.com. So this is a really good uh, code editing program with syntax highlighting, and it handles all kinds of different languages. So if you're using a Mac and you want a free code editor, I recommend either Optana or Komodo Edit. But one that I'm going to be showing you guys today is jsbin.com, and that's an online code editor. And you can uh, basically... It, it, you can't, it, it does have its limitations, but for what we're going to be doing initially, I think it serves 
a great purpose of just letting you get practice coding and publishing it on the web. So this is what we'll be using in this tutorial. The other thing it can do is it can handle JavaScript, which we won't be getting into, but uh, it's there if we need it. So um, let's get started. So go to jsbin.com and you'll initially have this, this JavaScript code here and HTML code already written. So let's go ahead and just delete both of those and we'll start fresh. Also, uh, you'll probably want to collapse this JavaScript. So put your mouse over the HTML and click. Uh, you'll notice it says hide JavaScript. Just go ahead and click it. So let's get started. Um, I'm going to be, well, I'll repost the HTML code from week two in this week's notes. But let's see. Yeah, you'll notice in week two, I sort of went over the main basic tags that I use when I'm coding. So those are the ones I'm going to be going over. And then there's also this cheat sheet right here, which has pretty much all of the different tags and elements in HTML. So um, we'll start with HTML. Well, first, before we get into that, I'll just kind of explain how HTML syntax works. So think of HTML as like the skeletal structure of a website and think of it in terms of nouns. So HTML describes what's on the page, whereas CSS describes how it looks and JavaScript describes how it functions. So you're going to have an opening tag and the name of the tag. So for every HTML document, you need to start it off with opening tag or left caret. And to get this symbol, it's the key just to the right of the M key on your keyboard. And you hold shift and press it. And then we're going to type HTML and click or hold shift and press period. And that will get us the, the uh, greater than sign. So we now have our opening HTML tag. Now the thing about HTML is you can nest tags inside of tags and use that with opening and closing tags. So I've opened the HTML tag, now I'm gonna go ahead and close it. And you'll notice it unindented it, but with everything within it is indented. And this is just to help us visually, um, just kinda unclutter it visually and just help us to stay a little more organized. So within the HTML, we're gonna put all of our HTML code. So the first one we're gonna have is the head tag. Oops. So opening head and close head. So you'll notice I do my opening and closing first. Uh, one thing a lot of coders will do when they start out is they'll just do the opening and then they'll start coding and stuff and a lot of times they'll forget to close it and that ends up causing all kinds of problems and you have to kind of go through your code and look where you didn't close a tag. And I know I've done that many times, especially when, a, I mean, for example, if we pull up this site, source code, you can see there's a lot of code here. And so it can become really easy to kind of just miss a period or miss one of these symbols or miss a slash or something and that will end up screwing up your whole website. So you wanna be very careful about your spelling and hitting the right keys and having opening and closing tags. And that's another reason uh, syntax highlighting is really helpful because if, if you have an error in your code, it's not gonna be highlighted correctly and you can kind of like look in your code to see where something doesn't look like it's colored the right way and that will help you sort of find your problem. Also you notice on the left here, each line is numbered and that can be really helpful if you get like an error message and it usually tells you what line the error is on. So, and by the way, to, to get what I just showed you, um, to get the source code, it's different in every browser but usually the hotkey in Mac is going to be Command-U or Command-in 
Command Option U. In Chrome, it's Command Option U. And I think also in Safari, it's Command, let me, yeah, it's also Command Option U in Safari. The problem with Safari is they don't do syntax highlighting in their source code, so I'd rather use another program. In Firefox, the um, source code is Command U, and that brings that up. And if you're in Internet Explorer, I'm not sure exactly, but it's probably in the View menu, and it'll just say View Source. Um, and you'll notice here it says Page Source, and then the hotkey is to the right. Okay. So, back to JSPIN. So inside of your head tag, that's sort of where you put kind of descriptive or functional code that sort of describes the page itself, but doesn't necessarily show up in like visually in the browser. So for example, let's just look at these guys head tag. So you notice we got the HTML. This right here isn't totally necessary but um, this sort of refers us back to the W3 or the World Wide Web Consortium website, um, but that's not going to really help the functionality of your code at all. And then you notice our head opens, and then inside of that we have things like meta tags, title tags, link tags, script tags, uh, more link tags, more meta, keeps going before it finally closes off. So you'll notice these are pretty much the only tags you'll see, script, link, title, and meta. So what link tags do are, are mostly for linking to external CSS documents, and we'll get into that later, but um, if you want, if you have a whole site that's made up of many HTML pages, and you want to have a single CSS page that dictates all of them, you just link to it through the links. And you notice we've got our CSS code here. All of this code is going to be applied to every single page that's linked to it. Whereas if we pick, take that code and put it directly in this HTML page, this page is the only one that's going to be able to see that code. Um, and then script is mostly for linking to JavaScript. Uh, files. So if you click here, this is all JavaScript code. And again, for the same reason, you want to link to it externally so that basically you just have to include one link in all of your HTML pages and you don't have to rewrite all that code. And another principle in coding is you don't want to have to repeat anything that you don't have to. So um, anytime you end up writing the same code over and over, um, that's, those are instances when you want to find more, to, more efficient and kind of automated ways to do those things. Oh, and meta. Meta tags are basically for SEO, and that stands for Search Engine Optimization. So let's look for a meta tag. So right here. And that's for when Google is crawling your site, it's gonna look inside your meta tags and it's gonna use that for categorizing your website. So you notice right here, we've got meta description and it says, one of the most important aspects of being a web developer is having the correct tools and applications, blah, blah, blah. So when meta or when Google crawls this page, they're gonna take this description and it's gonna put that into your search result. So for instance, I'm going to just search for uh, web tools. And you notice we've got the title here, and then we've got this description. This description right here is what was in that meta tag that I just showed you. And then this right here is what is in the, let's see if I can find it, title. So anything inside of a title tag, you notice 30 plus amazing Mac apps that shows up here in the title bar. Now, this is all tabbed up, so you won't see the full title, but if we go to like um, uh, Firefox, you notice up here it says grand people. If I pull up their source code, 
we're gonna notice in the title tag, it says grand people. So whatever you put in your title tag goes up here at the top, at your title bar. And that's also what shows up in your search results. So that is, just imagine a title tag around this and a meta tag around this. All right. And that's pretty much it for the head. So let's go ahead and add our title tag. So open carrot, I also call these carrots. Um, open and then close. And then inside of there, we're just gonna call this my first web page. And we don't need to worry about the meta tags or the link tags or the script tags at this point. That's gonna be later on. So we're pretty much done with the head tag. So we're still inside the HTML, but we're outside of the head. So the next thing we add is the body tag. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that. Oops. Anything inside the body tag is what shows up on the actual browser. So pretty much from the top down, this is all what we're seeing here is all in the body. So if I pull up the source code, you'll probably see an image, um, the, the source for this image right here, and that'll be an IMG tag. So let's check it out, see if I'm right. Or it's probably gonna be a div tag, but one of the first things you'll see is this image. So source, scroll down. All right, we've ended the head and we started the body. So you notice they've kind of thrown in this script here. This, um, and this is most likely JavaScript that they only want to affect this specific page. So that's why they haven't linked to it externally. So script, script, and then yeah, like I said, div is probably the first one. And we'll get into later why we use divs, but divs are basically really generic holding elements. And the way you sort of change or describe a div is by giving it an ID. And the ID links it to the CSS, and that's where we put all our descriptors for this div. But again, we'll get into that later. But let's see where that image is. So we've got our top navigation here, and this is an unordered list with list items, and then we've got A tags, and these are links. Um, so I, oh, here it is. Class logo, net tuts plus. So this is that image that I was describing. And they didn't actually let me just inspect that element. Yeah, so this actually isn't an image. This is actually just a link, and they're actually using a background image to use that image, but we'll get into that later. But anyways, the main point of me showing you this is this is all the visual elements start appearing as soon as you get into the body. Now these script tags won't show up, that's just straight JavaScript. But you'll notice, like I said, you ha and also notice when I put my mouse over these different elements, they highlight here. And um, I'm doing this in Chrome, but you can also do this in Firefox with Firebug. But this can really help you visualize what the different HTML tags are doing. So I put my mouse over this div ID header wrap and you'll notice it's just this section right here. And you'll notice there's some blank space below it. That's using the CSS. And then if I fold these arrows down, we get more and more specific. So this is called nesting. So we're nesting different HTML tags inside of other HTML tags. If I open this unordered list, and this is um, for the top navigation, so these links right here, when I fold that down, we're gonna have individual list items. So advertisers, oh, and that's actually this right here. So we've got our header and then our unordered list. So notice how it highlights at the top. And inside of that, we've got list item, advertise, 
Then we got our next one, which is right for us, then about, then usage. And inside of each one of those, we have A tags. So I hope as I'm going through this and highlighting all these elements, you're sort of getting the feel for just the basic structure of HTML. And um, I mean, this that's pretty much it. I mean, you've got tags, they have different names, then they have IDs and classes, and then you put your content inside of them. That's, that's the basic formula for coding HTML. So if you try to keep it to that mentally, it should kind of help you not to feel too overwhelmed. So that was a really complex example of code. We're gonna start with the very basics. So inside of our body, let's go ahead and create a title. So the first one we're gonna do is an H1 tag. And sorry for my bad typing. So H tags stand for headers, and we've got H1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. H1 is the largest, and H6 is the smallest. So I'm going to type, this is the title. And let's go ahead and just hit preview. And this is going to show us what this code actually gets translated into. And you notice we've got this really big text here. And um, let's see, you probably can't see the title, but yeah. So that's our first text right there. Now, if I go down below that and I just type some more text, this is some more text. Hit preview. This is the normal size. And then this is a header. You'll also notice a header puts quite a bit of spacing below it and also a little bit of spacing above it. And that can, you can actually customize how much spacing there is if you have spacing at all using CSS. So now I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna demonstrate a principle here and that's that there's a thing called white space. So in coding right here, what I'm doing is I'm generating white space in my code. Now, this actually isn't going to make any difference how your, um, how your page is displayed to the visitors of your site. So just to demonstrate, I'm gonna go down like four lines. This is another line. Now when I hit preview, what do you think it's gonna look like? All right, you kinda, you have your guess. Let's go and check. This is another line. Well, it appears right after this with one single space. Now, let's say I want more spaces. So this is some more text. I'm going to put a bunch of spaces here. So what do you think is going to happen? Still one space. What about if I tab this over? Well, actually, it's just going to tab my whole line. So that's not really doing anything. So the point is, white space does not show up in the browser. So I've got several space lines here, and I've got several spaces here. None of that shows up in your code. And um, I guess that's good because you notice we have tabs in here, and we've got lines. This is to help us visually as coders, but we don't necessarily want all those tabs and spaces to show up for our viewers. So. There's a couple ways to actually add spaces. One way is to create a BR tag. And this one's a little different. This is a self-closing tag. And there's a few of these that will be coming across. But in a self, you notice this one, we've got our opening, there's no slash, and then we've got our closing. That's got a slash right before the name. With a self-closing, that has the slash after the name. That's telling HTML that you're not, you're telling it not to anticipate a closing tag. So what this does it, is it basically, for the visitor or for the viewer, it puts your text down one line. So let's see how that looks. This is some text, this is another line. So it brought my next line down one. Now let's add another one. Now it's pushed it down another line. 
another one. So you get the picture. These are like individual line breaks. Now, you can do that, but a cleaner way to do it and a, a more preferred way to do it in code is to wrap these in paragraph tags. So I've got opening P, closing P. And then next I'm gonna have, I'm gonna do the same thing. So let's see how that looks. So paragraph tags actually put space below your lines. So how about I'll do some something else. This is another line inside the first paragraph. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a line break inside of there. So we're inside the same paragraph, but we've got a line break. So let's see how that looks. So the BR puts it down one line, but it doesn't put any spaces below it, whereas the paragraph puts a nice big gap at the bottom of it. And that's something else that you can edit using CSS. So, so far we've done HTML, head, title, body, H1, P, and BR. So hopefully we're off to a good start and you guys are getting this. Now I'm just gonna show you an H2 tag just to show you the difference. In fact, I'll, I'll show you all six of them. So we've got H2, H3, H4, and one thing you can do, one thing I end up doing as a coder is I do a lot of copy and pasting. So instead of having to retype repetitive code, I'm just gonna copy that and, and it adds the indentation there, so you're gonna have to start at the beginning. So in five, five, six, six. So header two, header three. And again, I'm just gonna copy header four, header five, and header six. So let's preview that. So you notice they get incrementally smaller. You also notice that these are all bold so they, they're a little thicker. So let's say we actually wanna add some boldness to our text. So I wanna bold embolden first paragraph. The way we do that is, there's actually two ways. The old way of doing it is it's a B tag for bold. And let's see if that actually still works. And yes, it does, B bolds things. But the more conventional standard way to do it is with a strong tag. So this one I'm gonna use strong tag, another line. So another line is now bold. And so you can use B or strong, either way works. Now uh, let's add underlining. So I'm gonna underline another line. So to do that, you just type U and then close the U. And that got underlined. Now let's italicize something. Let's see, I'm gonna italicize more text. And that, whoops. Again, there's, whoops, there's two ways to do this. The old way is I for italic. And that text got italicized, but the, the modern, more standard way to do it is EM. And it's still italicized. So either way works. So I'm gonna use I with that. And by the way, if, if my pacing is too fast or slow, feel free to hit pause or rewind or whatever you want. Or review it, but yeah, just follow along at your own pace. 
Okay, now next on the list, let's try unordered lists. Now unordered lists are, um, for example, in the notes. Now these are all ordered lists. Um, trying to find an example from the notes. I guess I tend to use ordered lists, but right here you'll notice we've got a black dot, then a white dot, and then a square dot. These are all examples of unordered lists. And then this is actually, we're putting an unordered list inside of an unordered list, and then another unordered list inside of that one. So we've got three levels deep of unordered lists. So let's practice coding that. So I'm typing my unordered list, UL, and then closing it. And inside of that, it's gonna nest individual list items. So li slash li. And since I know I'm gonna have lots of list items, I'm just gonna copy that, hit return. And that way I'm coding more quickly. Now let's see if it, yeah, so it's created dots for all those, but um, we don't have any text yet. So I'm just gonna call this item one item two, item three, item four, and I'll just, I'm lazy, so I'm just gonna delete those. And we've got bulleted items here. Now, if we want to actually place another unordered list inside of that, what we're gonna go do is go inside of the first list item and make another unordered list and close it. So inside of there, I'm gonna tab over and make more list items. So I'm just gonna call this sub item one, sub item two, sub item three. And just for kicks, Let's go ahead and make another unordered list inside of that. And put more list items in there. So sub, sub one, sub, sub two, sub, sub three. So let's check it out. So you notice just like that example I showed earlier, we've got a filled in dot, a hollow dot, and then a square. We got the same results here. Filled, empty, square. So hopefully that all makes sense. Now let's say we want something with numbers in it. So let's go to item two and make inside of that an ordered list. So OL. And then we're gonna close that. Now I'm gonna create list items inside of there. So I'm gonna call this OL1, OL2, OL3, OL4. So let's see how that looks. So you notice under t item two, I had an ordered list and you notice it puts numbers and period and then a little space and then my items. And you notice when I highlight it, well, well, I, I can't actually highlight these numbers um, because these are sort of, these are being dynamically generated. So now what do you think will happen if inside of the first ordered list item, I put another ordered list? Well, I'm just gonna put some random text. Get more numbers. Okay. So those are um, list items, unordered lists, and ordered lists. And notice how we get this nice indentation here. That really helps us visually to keep our code 
straight, you know, and kind of help us to stay focused and organized. Now let's go ahead and add some links. So, oh, and actually I just found a coding error. Remember what I was telling you about not closing tags? Here's a perfect example of how that happened. So, oh wait, no, 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 because it closes here. My bad, sorry to startle you guys. But that does happen though. Okay, let's go ahead and make a link. So I'm gonna go down be below these ordered lists and unordered lists. I'm gonna start a new paragraph. This is a paragraph with a link to Google. So right now we just have our regular text, but what I wanna do is make Google a link to Google's website. Now links are a little more tricky because they actually have kind of sub elements within the tag. So we've got, so the, the tag for a link is A, it's not L, and A is actually for anchor. And anchors are sort of when you're in a website and you click and it sort of scrolls down automatically to another section in the site. Uh, that's how we, that's what anchors are used for, but they're also used for links. Now to get a link to go somewhere externally, inside of our first our opening tag, we have to type href, so href equals, and then quote, quote marks, and inside of the quote marks is our link. Now, when doing a link, there's two types of links. You can link to something locally, and then link to something remotely. Now, since we don't really have a file structure on this jsbin.com, we won't be able to link anything locally. But let me just uh, demonstrate real quick what that's like. Um, let me... Right. See if I have any code. Okay, well just for example, I'm gonna create a new directory called site. So inside of site, I'm going to have a new HTML document. So um, I need to find one real quick. So Okay, so we've got index.html. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that. I don't really know what it is, but this is just for the demo. So index.html is sort of your your default file. So let's say you go to google.com. You actually don't have to type index.html, but that's actually what it's bringing up. Or it's going to be like an index.php. But index.html is sort of like the hidden file. That's your default file when you go to a certain site. Now let's say I've got another HTML file in here. So I'm going to call this like resume. Now, if I were to link to this locally, inside of that, I would just type resume.html. And when people click that, it's going to pull up this page into your browser. But let's say I've got um, a folder or directory called portfolio. And inside of that, I've got a web page document. The way I would link to that locally is I would type portfolio slash web dash page dot HTML and that would pull it up. So a slash just basically represents something inside of a folder. Now if I were to make another folder inside of here um, so like client pages. And by the way, anything with the web, you can't use spaces. Like I can't do it like that. Um, you have to use dashes or underscores. 
And also it's usually best to keep all of your uh, names of your files and folders lowercase because if you have mixed cases or camel case as it's called um, you actually have to enter it into the address bar with those capital letters otherwise if if this were um, capital web dash page html and I typed that into the address bar with a lowercase it's actually not going to go to that page so it's actually very picky about or it's it's very case sensitive so we've got portfolio and then client pages and then I'll just call this client one so in that case we would go inside portfolio slash client dash pages slash client one dot html so client pages slash client one dot html and you can do the same thing with images too so um, well let's just go on the line if we go to google.com we've got this element right here which is an image if we say inspect element we're gonna see an IMG tag and then the source of that image so if I were to link to this image you can uh, copy image URL and replace the H the stuff inside the href quotes with this and you're gonna notice this is a dot PNG you can also have dot JPEG and dot GIF for images and and th those are the three main image formats for the web but we'll get into that later so you notice when I linked so th this is an example of locking uh, sorry linking remotely and since I don't have Google's files on my um, hard drive locally or on my server locally I actually have to link remotely to their site so anytime you're linking to something remotely you have to start with the HTTP colon slash slash and then the name of the site so the www dot is optional that's not going to affect it well in some cases it will but rarely it does and then you will notice they have an images directory a logos directory and then the actual name of the image which is ps underscore logo two dot png so let's test this out when I go under preview this is a paragraph with a link to Google look in this corner right here the lower right um, Chrome actually brings up the URL of the link for me and it's telling me I'm gonna go to google.com and then inside their images folder their logos folder I'm gonna pull up that image so let's see what happens when I click on it that's what we get we get the image but I actually don't want the image I want to go to Google so I'm gonna delete that and the slash again that's optional you can have it you don't have to have it so HTTP HTTP colon slash slash google.com inside of the quotes so a href equals and then this is the text of the link and then close a tag preview click here takes us to Google all right now one thing this did is you notice I've got this tab right here we're still inside of JS bin it's actually opening this inside of a frame which is still we're still on JS bins website but it's sort of this the frame is sort of like a portal to other websites so we actually don't want that so the way you open it in a new tab is anywhere inside of this a tag so before the href or after it you have to type target equals and then quotes and underscore you have to have the underscore blank and what this line of code right here is going to do is open my link in a new tab so let's check it out this is a paragraph with a link to Google 
And look, now we have google.com in the top, we have a new tab, and if we go back, we still have our original page. So that way I'm not having to hit the back button. Um, so you might be wondering, when do you use blank and when do you not use it? Um, my philosophy is if you're linking anywhere within your own website, so uh, for example, if I'm on my, whoops, oh, I just, crap, I just closed my window. Okay, so if I, if I go to punchmybucket.com, if I go to the web section, it goes click slash web. Whereas within it, I've got a link. This is one of my sites I've built. Um, if I click here, it creates a new tab. So my thing is, if you're if you're linking outside of your site, do the underscore blank. If you're linking within the site, don't use it. Because people don't want to, like, as they're going through my site, they don't want to have you know, 20 different tabs open just by visiting my site. But um, if they want to go to a new site, it's like they can go there without having to go back and reload my site. Um, another reason I like opening stuff in new tabs is, um, let's say I'm on a blog and I'm just kind of skimming through uh, I don't want to have to keep reloading this page if I'm going to multiple blog posts. So the way you can do that is in Apple, hold down Command Shift, and that's going to force it to open your link in a new tab. So I'm going through this thing and I'm like, oh, this isn't what I wanted. I can just close it and my old page is still here. Whereas if I just click here, it has to load this page. And I'm like, oh, that's not what I wanted. I click the back button. It's got to load this page over again. So that's why I like having new tabs occasionally. Okay, well, um, I'm going to go ahead and pause it to go and recode out the page I just lost. Um, okay, I, I didn't retype all the code. I just retyped some of it. Um, but I've just got one more element I want to show you guys. And that will be all the HTML for this week's lesson. So the final thing I want to do is show you guys how to place images. So um, the way you do that, and this is sort of on par in terms of uh, complexity with href tags, in that you have sort of sub elements within your opening tag. So I'm going to create the IMG and then I'm going to have to tell it where the image is located. So I'm going to type SRC, which stands for source, equals, and then quotes. And then I'm, I'm going to go ahead and close it. And then this, an image or an IMG tag is an example of an, another example of self-closing self tag. Uh, in that you'll notice I put a slash right before the end of the, the closing caret. So you remember how we had, um, we looked up the source um, for this image? Well, let's do that again. So right click, copy image URL. Now this again will be different for each browser. It might say, let me, let me see how it looks in Safari. I'm gonna go to Google. In, in Safari, they say um, copy image address. And in Firefox, copy image location. So image location, image address, image source, one of those. But you don't want to do copy image. So, um, so yeah, URL source or whatever. I'm not going to show you Internet Explorer because I forbid you guys from using Internet Explorer for this class. And I suggest, well, the only the only times you should use Internet Explorer is if you are testing your site to see if it runs on Internet Explorer. But you guys need to stop using Explorer 
as a browser because it's bad and it's old, it's buggy. And hopefully you read that, that article or the link to the articles for the reasons why Internet Explorer is a bad browser. There's no reason you should be using it unless you absolutely have no other choice and the computer you're on doesn't let you download other browsers. That's the only reason you should ever use it. So IMG source equals, and then we're just going to paste the address of that image. Let's test it out. Header Google. We got our image. So that's how you place an image. Now let's say I want that image to actually link. What we're going to do is take this opening and closing a tag and just wrap the image with it. So um, I'm actually going to just take the closing tag and drag it. I guess I can't do that. So I'm going to cut it. So in Apple, that's Command X. In Windows, it's Control X. And then Command V to paste or Control V, Command V or Control V. So now I've got the A tag wrapped around the text that says Google and also this image. So let's see what happens. We've got Google and then the image Google. So, and you also notice my cursor changes from an arrow to a pointy finger. And that's just indicating that we've got a hyperlink. So when I click on that, kaboom, takes us to google.com. Okay, so what I would like you guys to do for homework is I want you to create a brief opening page that, um, that describes yourself. All right, so I've sort of created a really brief uh, HTML website that kind of demonstrates the techniques that we learned today. It's obviously going to look really ugly and old, but the main purpose is to kind of train you guys to use the different tag types and to have good clean code. So I'm going to sort of lay out here the specifications that I want you guys to have in the site. Okay, so I want you guys to have everything inside the HTML tag. I want you to have a head tag, and inside that I want you to have a title tag with the name of your title. So it should say, mine in my title tag is gonna say John's first page. Yours is gonna say your name first page or my first page. Next, I want to have an inside of the body tag, which is all this. I want you to have an H1 tag with the same title. Then I want you to have an H3 tag with about me. Use a paragraph tag that sort of describes yourself really quickly. I want you to bold your name, italicize something, and underline something else. After that, I want another H3 tag that says my info. And then I want you to make an unordered list with three list items, one with your email, and um, one with your phone, and one with your homepage. If you don't have a homepage, you should make it up. And you don't have to include your phone number. So I put 555 in mine. You can do the same. But I want you to embolden email, phone, and homepage, and then I want your link for your homepage to link to another website. And I want you to use the target blank method. I want you to make an H3 tag that says my favorite site, and then I want you to use the IMG tag and link to the image of your favorite site with their logo, and then actually have it link to that website. So in my case, I put lynda.com, click on it, takes you to lynda.com so pretty much follow this format and that's it also uh, for your homework just try to pick out a browser or I mean I'm sorry a text or a code editor that you want to use so if you're using Mac try out Komodo edit or Optana those are the free ones or one of these other ones that are paid or Dreamweaver and Dreamweaver is really, really helpful, but it tends to be pretty expensive. So I'm not going to require that you get Dreamweaver for this course, but it's a good idea. And the other thing is I want you to do, 
I want you to code this all out by hand. I don't want you to use um, any uh, code editors that do any coding automatically for you. And the last thing I want you to do is click the Save button on JSBin. And what that's going to do is it's going to create a unique URL for your site. So just go ahead and copy this. So jsbin.com slash and then the thing it spits out. And you don't need the slash edit. So if I copy that and paste that into a new browser, that's going to pull up my page. So what I want you to do is um, go on the discussion board and post a link. And also, I want you to describe which code editor you ended up downloading and using and what your experience has been so far. And I'm going to write all this out in the notes. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for listening.